That IV hurt, my port stopped working. It's like a virtual yeah. meet and greet. <laughs> I've wanted to do this for years. Oh no, what happened? Well, the nice thing about watercolor is it's made of water. So when Ollie drips his beard Ollie. drippings, he just got a drink of water. Yeah, we just got back from a walk and he walked over and he dripped on these paintings that Mary's working on. But it's okay? I think it's fine. I never got very far on the snowmen. So I, I, I do know like them a lot. I'm but. glad. I know I'm not going to be able to do enough of those to sell them this year. Okay. But maybe next year. Maybe next year. Sometimes you don't accomplish your goals, and that is just life. <laughs> <laughs> Real life with Mary. Real life encouragement. Mm. Today's video is sponsored by Abridge, and thank you to Abridge for your continued support of the Fry Life. Abridge is a resource for you guys when you are at your doctor's appointments. You open up the app on your phone, push record, and it will transcribe what you and your doctor are talking about and then you can revisit it after your appointment because sometimes at our appointments it's a little overwhelming and we don't catch all the details so afterward you you can go back to that part oh when my doctor talked about that new medication how many times a day am i supposed to take it you can click on it and it'll so it's as easy you. as starting the recording like that. Here, let's say some medical words. Like, okay, well, hello, Peter. You're at your appointment. I am your doctor. I am here to talk about my diarrhea. Oh, no. <laughs> what have you tried so far for your diarrhea? Well, what, what do you take for diarrhea? <laughs> I don't know. Like, Pepto Bismo. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, okay, well, continue taking that twice a day. Maybe I'll take some Tylenol, too. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just trying to get some key medical words in there. All right, so I'm all set. <laughs> this is cool. When you finish your recording, you can share it with family members who maybe couldn't have been right. there with you. One of the things that comes to mind for me is as we head into this new season of life, welcoming a little one into our family, we're gonna be going to appointments for that little one. And there's gonna be a whole new world to listen for. Things that I am not used to listening for in baby appointments. And so knowing that we have this resource, it just can bring a peace of mind and a helpful, helpful tool. I hope that it can be as helpful for you guys as it has been for us. I've heard from tons of you that this has been such a blessing in your life and I'm so glad. And I know that the creators of A Bridge are glad as well because this was created by a cardiologist with his patients in mind. And because it's the holiday season, A Bridge said to us, we want to do something special for the Fry Life. And so we were in conversation with them of what would be special to give away to you guys. We want to give away a video call with us. And yes. not just one, we're gonna give away 24 five minute yeah. video calls with us. And so, so it's like a virtual yeah. meet and greet. <laughs> I've wanted to do this for years. And so to enter the giveaway, all you have to do is there's a link in the description that you can go to. It'll take you to download the Bridge app, check it out, try it out at your next doctor's appointment. And then there will be a form on that link to fill out your information to enter the giveaway. We wanna thank a Bridge for sponsoring this vlog and this giveaway, we're super excited. Okay, just because we finished recording that clip, I opened the Abridge app and I wanted to show a little follow-up clip of what the key moments in our conversation with Dr. Mary were. Well, hello, Peter, you're at your appointment. I'm your doctor, I'm here to talk to you about diarrhea. And notice how it made diarrhea bold? So in your real conversation with your doctor, you can scroll through and see the key words and like medications like Tylenol, you can click on that section. Tylenol too. <laughs> okay. 
Peter had a lunch meeting to go to, so before he left, I had him go ahead and access my port, and my nurse will be here in an hour, but the last like two hours, I've been working on just all sorts of random things. I think I hit some like nesting feelings. I just like feel like I need to get stuff done. So I went through this cabinet, which is part of our, we have two like Tupperware cabinets and I organized in here some, I mean, you can't really tell from this, but yeah, but I just put all the canned goods back up in there and organized a bit of that, which felt really productive. I got a couple of old like empty containers out of there that we finished what was in there. I made Harry's pill balls, as I call them. It's like a gooey treat that you stick the pill into and then completely cover the pill so he can't taste it. And I got like three weeks of those balled up. So that's good. I pulled my Palmazyme out of the refrigerator and I like to take them out of these packages. I wouldn't do it if it was gonna be out of the package for more than a few weeks or maybe a month or two at a time because they are light sensitive, but they're in the refrigerator and the door to the refrigerator is closed almost at all times. So it's really not getting a lot of light. So I personally feel comfortable with that, but I take them out of the package and I rip them off in sets of two because I do two every morning. And I have a whole bunch of those ripped up in the freezer. I mean, in the refrigerator, do not freeze your Palmazine. And <laughs> Yeah, just kind of like organizing and feeling productive. Um, somebody gave me another stack of kids books. I do need to get those put away. And these items are still out from the last time I did IVIG. So perfect. One benefit of not putting them away is they're always there when you need them. All right. I definitely need to organize this bookcase. Should I do that next? I think what I'm gonna do first, I think I'll go up and grab all my IVIG stuff, anything that I will need or that the nurse will need, bring it back down, and then I'll organize the bookcase and work on that. Oh, I worked up in the baby's room. I got a few organizational bins. I was given a gift card, and so I ordered some more organization bins. Hold on, I'll go up there and show you those new bins. Okay, let me show you. These are the bins. So these are like the clothes that the baby will grow into, and then these are clothes, or will be, like those are sheets, but these will be clothes that the baby will use immediately. Like these are the size that they need, etc. And then we can reach into these bins to get bigger clothes. I've got my IVIG supplies. All right, then I usually look through and make sure that I have all the supplies that I will need. I'm already accessed, so all I'm gonna need is a flush. Oh, yeah, I do need to go back up. I need to get the IV bag and the tubing for the pump. This is the pump I use. But that works that I need to go back up because I have prescriptions that we picked up last night that I need to take upstairs into the medical closet. So I'm gonna take these up and I'll be back down with other medical goodies. While I was up there, I grabbed my pre-medications. I've never had a reaction to IVIG, but because it's a blood product, there's variance in the medication because it's a blood product. So at least my team has always recommended taking Tylenol and Benadryl before I start IVIG each time, just to prevent any reaction. And then that's why I have the blood pressure and temperature check every, I don't know, 15 to 30 minutes. Depending on when my rate changes, that's whenever I check my blood pressure and my temperature because those would be signs, like first signs to look for if I'm gonna have a reaction. I just realized I was over here, so I thought I'd look at my plants, and since you're with me, 
I will show you. This cactus bloomed recently. As you can see, that tiny white flower. And these are some of the paddles that I took off of another cactus that had grown all its arms and they're doing well. Well, wow, I think I might be making up for the fact that I felt so dizzy a few days ago that I was unable to basically do anything all day. My nurse, like I said, is on her way and I went up and changed out my continuous glucose monitor sensor because it had just expired so I needed to get that done. So I just ran up, got that done. What was that sound? Maybe the wind? I thought maybe the nurse was here, but yeah. All right, getting it all done. Just do the next thing. Just take the next step. And perhaps I'm getting everything done because I also know that that Benadryl is eventually gonna kick in. And then I got really grouchy and really tired. <laughs> so, oh, I'm also boiling some water. I'm making some basically, yeah, like distilled water, not distilled. But yeah, if you boil the water, it zaps the any bacteria in it. And I'm gonna put it in this pitcher and it has like a little nozzle on the front. So I'm also doing that. I'm getting it all done. Okay, I just woke up from my IVIG nap. I kind of just crumpled on the couch. That IV hurt, not when it, when she put it in, she did an amazing job. And I warned her that I had passed out before from getting a peripheral IV. It was under different circumstances though, and there was a lot of digging in the, like years and years ago when I passed out. Um, so there was no passing out. She did a great job, she got it in. Peripheral IVs just hurt when they're in. And this one just hurt, so now it hurts. But it's done. I was determined to get IVIG. We tried my port. Oh, I don't think I said this. My port stopped working. We tried. Peter had accessed it. It was being tough, but I got it to flush and I got blood return. So I was like, okay, it's just being tough, whatever. Then when my nurse got here, I go to flush and get blood return and I flush and a couple cc's goes in and then no blood return and it wouldn't flush, it wouldn't blood return. And it, yeah, so I had the needle in from Peter when he did it earlier and then my nurse accessed me, we tried it, didn't work. We accessed again, tried it, didn't work. So then we just did the peripheral. Cause I was like, I have big things in my life. Like I need to go ahead and just be committed to getting IVIG today. I need to get those antibodies in me and just go for it. So it's all good. It's done. That's a crazy, <laughs> crazy day. I came home and she's like. He was out working after his meeting. Yeah, and she was like, I have an IV and we tried twice and my port's not working. I was like. Crazy. It's just, this port has always been weird. It's usually worked but it's always had issues. If I, when I was on IVs, like IV antibiotics, if I moved my arm this way, it would like dislodge the port. We found, diff or dislodge the needle. We found different things like keeping one little piece of gauze under it, lifts the needle to the right height, and then tape it, and also don't move this arm. Definitely don't go like this. That's just, you're done. Uh, don't like reach off the bed too far. There were all these rules when I was on IV antibiotics a lot because I just learned what made the, what made the needle get out of place. I guess he wants more dinner. Okay. Um, but thankfully I only use it for IVIG anymore and that's only a few hours once a month and I haven't had very many issues. But like two months ago, I think it was about two months ago, Peter accessed me and it was as if we were, the needle was in the wrong spot. Like I couldn't flush it or anything. But I think now maybe that was just the preliminary issues of whatever issue is happening right now. I don't know. We'll see. But anyway, I did it. We're done for the day. And thanks for joining us today. And as always, we'll see you tomorrow. See you tomorrow, guys. Good night. Good night, Bonesy. Can you say good night?